Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So tonight we have uh, Dr. Salim with us. He is the assistant professor of the Department of Foreign Languages and Literature from the National Sun Yat-sen University, Kaohsiung, Taiwan, since 2018 until now. And he is also the assistant professor of the English Department of Chinese University of Hong Kong from 2014 to 2018. Dr. Salim, he is a Tunisian. Uh, Arabic is his mother tongue. While he was in Hong Kong, he conducted Arabic classes and Tajwid class in the Surfing Islam team. He was respected and loved by his students as he is friendly and well prepared for his lessons. And he also followed up on homework. So everyone, please bear in mind you are required to do your homework after the class. So without further delay, I would like to pass uh, the time to Dr. Salim. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Salim. Bismillah wa salatu wa Thank you, Sister Zarina and Brother Yusuf. Uh, thank you, Sister Zarina, for this beautiful introduction. <laughs> uh, I think it's a bit too much for me. Jazakallah khair. And thank you, Brother Yusuf, for, for organizing all of this. Um, actually, it's your idea. You, you, have, Alhamdulillah. Uh, you have pushed me to do this. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so um, what are we going to do in this class? We are going to start with the basics of Tajweed. That is the um, scientific recitation of the Holy Quran. Um, scientific... Well, we are not going to say scientific, but we are going to say the careful uh, and measured recitation of the Quran. And um, the, re the reason why I say scientific is because um, it's really, really related to the pronunciation of the sounds and the science of the sounds called phonetics. So it's actually a real science. Um, what are the course prerequisites? What do we need? We need the Quran. We need the Mus'haf. And I recommend to you um, a mushaf which has the color codes for Tajweed. So I have one here, this one. And I'm going to go ahead and give you a short introduction about uh, the meaning of Tajweed in Islam. Uh, you have some of the basic definitions or meanings of Tajweed, um, Arabic language. MashaAllah, it's such a fascinating language because uh, we call it a generative language because you can start with consonants, basic consonants, and you can derive so many words out of these consonants. So for example, in Arabic, we have the letters Jim, Wow, and Del, Ja, Wa, Da. And this, where these three letters can derive Jawada, Tajweed, Mujawid. Okay, it's the same with the letters Sin, Lam, Mim. Three letters, you can derive so many words. For example, Islam, Salam, Salim, Muslim, right? This is the generative power of the Arabic language. But what is the meaning of Tajweed or Jawada? Well, basically the meaning is to make something well or better or improve it. And it doesn't just apply to the science of recitation, but it can be applied to anything you do in life. If you are doing a skill, an art or um, a technique, you can make it mujawad, improve it, make it better, make it nicer, okay? So it applies to different aspects of our life, how we can make something better, improved, nicer, okay? and. One of the things you need to be aware of, brothers and sisters, is that the tajweed is something that is our duty as Muslims. As we know, as we know, it is the duty of a Muslim to seek knowledge. And many scholars, in fact, it's the majority of scholars have agreed that tajweed, it is what we call fard ayn. It's a duty upon every Muslim to learn. So fard, we know fard is the, something that is compulsory. When we say something is fard, salat is fard, zakat is fard, uh, salam Ramadan is fard, it's something compulsory. 
Fard Ain it means it's individually compulsory on every one of us, each and every individual Muslim. So people say, scholars say that Tajweed is your individual duty to learn Quran. There are other types of fard which are not your individual responsibility, but the responsibility of the community. So if you don't do it, the community will take charge of it. For instance, uh, building a masjid is called fard kifaya. Kifaya means if majority of Muslims do it, that's enough. It's not uh, a sin upon you if you don't do it yourself. Or for instance, uh, janazah, salat al janazah, the majority of Muslims will actually take care of that. Even if you are not there, there will be still people praying janazah. So that's fard kifaya. But coming back to tajweed, it's fardain, it's an individual duty for each and every Muslim to do that. Okay. Now, the third thing that I want to talk about, and very briefly, inshallah, is uh, tartil. So we hear many, many times, we hear people say tajweed or tartil, and sometimes these words are confused or sometimes they are, the meaning is merged. These two words are together. Tartil is very close to Tajweed. In fact, it includes Tajweed. It's a larger category. It's larger than Tajweed. And this word Tartil appears in Surah Al-Muzzammil. Surah Al-Muzzammil is chapter 73 of the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving instructions to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's saying to him, Okay, you shouldn't do like me, because huh? I forgot, I should say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم And then go ahead and say, أوزد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Okay, the recitation here, meaning of ترتيل, what is it? Recite the Quran with measured recitation. Rattil is the imperative. So we see here the word tartil is repeated twice. Rattil tartila. Recite in a measured way. So if we go to the uh, definition of tartil, and I don't want to make it too technical for you, brothers and sisters, uh, because the point is to learn how to do it accurately. So the meaning of tartil is slow. Not rushed, we have to take our time. And measured rhythmic recitation. And if we go to the people who have been really, really uh, influential in Islam in the science of tafsir al-Quran, one of the famous tafsir is tafsir ibn Kathir, a famous person who has taken care of uh, explaining the meaning of Quran. When he gave us the meaning of the, the word tartil, he says, tartil is to recite the Quran slowly, making the letters clear, each and every letter clear, because this is an assistance in understanding and pondering the meaning of the Quran. Why this is actually giving, giving us evidence of why we are doing tartil and tajweed. When we recite slowly, when we recite taking care of making every letter clear and obvious, this helps us to understand and to reflect on the meaning of the Quran. So rushing doesn't help. Rushing through the recitation doesn't help in any way. So taking our time because this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he used to recite the Quran in salah, he used to take his time. He used to make it slow, not rush through it. Okay. So that is the meaning of tartil. And inshallah, uh, we continue with what is tajweed. Why do we need tajweed? And that is the thing we are going to talk about now. So... <clears throat> If we focus on the science of Tajweed, we will actually focus on correcting using the right position of the organs of speech. And this is why earlier I said this is science because we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us and gave us beautiful organs of speech, which separates us from other species like animals. They make certain sounds, but they cannot articulate speech like us. So when we do tajweed, we are focusing on the right position of these organs of speech. And I'm going to tell you a little bit, what are these organs of speech? Now, what sister said is very correct. If we don't do tajweed, it's not just making the Quran beautiful. We can make the Quran lose its meaning if we don't do it correctly. 
we might mispronounce certain words and change the word completely to the intended meaning, the original meaning to something which is totally different, sometimes even opposite. For instance, let me show you an example why this is so important. Oh, there is a verse in the Quran that says, إِلَّا مَنْ أَطَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمًا Except for those who uh, come to Allah with a sound heart. قلب سليم, قلب سليم. Now, if you mispronounce that qaf, the letter qaf that you see here, and you substitute for it the letter kaf, the change of meaning is radically different. You're changing from the word heart to the word dog. So instead of saying qalb, you're saying kalb. Now that's a problem, right? When we are reciting the Quran, we don't want to corrupt the meaning of the Quran. This is why tajweed is important. You got it? Yes, everyone? Okay. Yes. Yes. Let's, let's check other yes. examples why it's so important to learn tajweed. And I hear it sometimes. Sometimes I hear this word. Have you ever heard a sister or a brother say, Insa Allah? Yes. Insa Allah. Uh, okay. Inshallah, inshallah, ins insa, not sh. Instead of sheen, the person will say seen. Sa'a yasu'u. Let me show you the meaning of what is sa'a. Worsened. Do you see it? Sha'a, will. If Allah wills, then sha'a Allah. But if you say, in sa Allah, if Allah worsened, if Allah make it bad. Astaghfirullah. Right, so you see the importance of reading. You have to understand what you're saying here. Because sa comes from asu, asu, the bad, not sha. A. Okay. All right, so I'm navigating between my slides and the and, uh, web browser here. Okay, everybody is okay so far? I always want to make a comprehension check to see if everybody is following. Yes. Okay. It's yes. so far it's not too complicated, right? Okay. Yeah. So we have a concept in, in Tajweed. Uh, many people talk about what we call lahan. <clears throat> lahan is mistake. If you make lahan, it means you have made a mistake in your recitation. But, but the mistake can be either strong mistake or weak mistake. What is that? Well, let me show you. Lah means incorrect pronunciation here. And the first lahan that is the worst lahan is lahan jali, this one. This is danger, what I call danger, <laughs> avoid it. Jali means obvious, obvious mistake, okay? And khafi means hidden mistake. It means it's still a mistake, but it doesn't change the meaning of the Quran. All right, I'm gonna give you examples of both, don't worry. So lahan jali is the first and most important mistake, like the very bad, serious mistake. Some people say that even it can make you get close to kufr, you know? Disbelief. For instance, if you say things like Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdu, Ha. You have transformed the sound Ha into sound Ha. And Alhamd means cancellation. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah. And if you say Alhamd, cancellation be to Allah. Astaghfirullah. So this is very serious. You know, the first important thing to know is there are very serious mistakes called lahan lahan is changing the sound so much that the meaning changes another mistake in tajweed or lahan jari is instead of saying it is you we worship and it is you we seek 
help from we're talking to Allah right when we recite Al-Fatiha we say right or wrong right or wrong yes Yes. yes. Okay. Right. So we talk to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? Allah is one. But if you say Iyaka, Iyaka, this is plural, talking to more than one person here. So you're talking to more more than one divinity. It is you all that we worship. All right. Okay. So we have to be careful about the lengthening, because this is mistake that changes the meaning of Quran. And this one is a third example of lahn, lahn, error in pronunciation that makes the mistake, the change of meaning. Okay. So if we say, inna, inna a'tayna kal kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Okay. Why is different inna and inna? Do you know anyone can help me here? Yes. What's the difference between inna and inna? Inna mean indeed. Very good. Which one this? And it, this? Uh, yeah, this one. Inna. And uh, inna for, uh, you can say, uh, vui. And uh -huh. indeed vui. Very good, brother. Mashallah. So indeed and indeed we. So the, yeah. the one with the alif. Indeed, we, it's Allah is yeah. talking, the magnitude of Allah, because Allah uses the we also, right? We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the emphatic we, we call it emphatic we means because Allah is talking himself as a entity, a big entity. But inna, it's indeed, it's not we. This one is indeed. And this one is indeed we. Okay, you see there's a difference in meaning here. So subhanAllah, a little lengthening will change the meaning. A small little lengthening and extra lengthening will change the meaning. So we don't want to do that. And then we have, uh, I said to you, one type of mistake is very bad, like the ones we saw. And the other type is bad, but it doesn't change the meaning, right? It is makruh. The second type is called lahan khafi, a hidden, hidden mistake or hidden change. So why do we say it doesn't change the meaning? It's because, for instance, when we talk about rules of qalqala, qalqala is to make a, a sound bounce. For example, qul huwa Allahu ahad. You see the <laughs> dip, right? <laughs> This is called qalqala, the d. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid, wa lam yulad. That's qalqala. If you say, qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, that is a mistake, but it doesn't change the meaning. It is called lahm khafi. It's hidden mistake. It's not obvious mistake. So it's, it's bad, but it's not as bad as the first one. Okay? And some people make this type of mistake more than this, uh, the first one. Okay, brothers and sisters. Okay, here's, okay. Here, uh, here's some examples of uh, yes. the mistake that does not change the meaning of the Quran recitation. For example, we don't do tafkhim. For instance, we say, um, Allah, Allah, Allah. Allah has tafkhim, okay? Uh, or we say, um, we say uh, Maryam instead of Maryam, 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 okay? That's still a mistake, but it's not as serious as the first time. All right, I'm going to skip this part because I think some of you don't know what this, this means. Izhar, idram, ikhfa. Don't worry. We will come to that. We are, we are in our first lesson today. We don't want to make it too complicated. Have you heard about something called Makharij al huruf Makharij al huruf Well, if you haven't heard about it, don't worry, because this is translated for you here. It's articulation points. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us such a beautiful system. Our body is full of systems. 
we have a digestive system, we have a, um, a nervous system, we have a circulation system, we have a breathing system, and we have a linguistic system. Perfect, subhanAllah. Allah created us in perfect measurements, but of course, humans are not meant to be living eternal lives. So one of the systems that we have is the language system, the articulatory language system. And in this system, we can take it in pieces, like a car, you know? Mechanically, you can take different pieces of that car and analyze them, yeah? The car has different parts of it, right? The same for us, for our articulation system, our language system, we have different sections. And makharij al-huruf, Harf in Arabic means letter. Huruf means letters, plural of letter. It's where the sound goes out from. Yes, it's where the sound goes out from. So in Arabic, it's called makharij al-huruf and I have made it here for easy for you to read, makharij al-huruf. In English, you can call them either articulation points or emission points where the sound goes out from. Okay, how many, how many points do we have that are articulation points? Well, let's have a look, okay? You still with me? Still with me, right? Yes. Okay, yes. we have five major areas of the human sound system. Our language system has five different areas. So we have, let's start together. We have the throat, the throat. We have the tongue. We have the two lips. We have the nose. And then we have inside the mouth from the, the inside, the start of the lips until the throat that's called a voice box, okay? It's the empty spa space of the mouth and throat. Five, right? Five. Now look at these. So the nose, the lips, the tongue, the empty mouth, the empty mouth and throat space, and the throat. Now each of these five makharij or emission points has from one to ten articulation points, right? Don't worry, I'm going to explain everything to you. The one that is the most active part is the tongue. Subhanallah, look, it has 10 articulation points. <laughs> so the tongue is responsible for lots of things. Sometimes we say bad things with our tongue, we cannot take them back, right? So the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever guarantees me who can keep his tongue, and his private parts, he will be guaranteed general. So we have to make sure we don't utter things we regret because the tongue is responsible for lots of evil deeds, right? Sometimes it's better not to use it. Okay, <laughs> but for Tajweed, we have to use it. We need to use our tongue and we need to perfect how to, to use it. So let me show you. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and this is the Arabic for them, I'm going to read it for you. The throat in Arabic is called Al-Halqa. <clears throat> Can we read it together? One, two, three, Al-Halqa. Al-Halqa. MashaAllah, good. The tongue is Al-Lisan. Al-Lisan. Al okay, let's synchronize our efforts. <laughs> so I will say one, two, three, and you say Al-Shafatan. One, two, three. Okay. Then we have the nose in Arabic is Al Khay One, two, three. Al Very good. And the last is the empty space in the mouth and throat, all that space, we call it al jawf. One, two, three. Al jawf. Al jawf. Very good. 
Uh, okay, I want to make it easy, okay? All of these are the points or the, uh, the areas that we use for uh, articulating in Tajweed. So we have, we have a constant flow of air from our lungs and we use that air. We have to pause, of course, sometimes. And all of these are important articulation points that allow us to pronounce the Quran. So let's start with uh, the throat, the articulation point, the throat. Starts here, the throat is this part. Okay, pharynx and larynx, the throat, all right? So the throat has one, two, three, four, five, six sounds we can pronounce without throat in Arabic. Okay, the, the first part you see from high to low, from high to low, okay? So the, the high part of the throat just behind the tongue, it's responsible for the sounds kha and gha. That's the closest part, meaning the upper, upper part of the throat. Kha. Okay, you can repeat. You can actually do it yourself. Kha, it's fine. We can make some noises here, no problem. This is the part. Kha. And this one is kha. Okay. Right. Wow. Where, where does it happen? It's actually not this deep. Not this deep. It's normally it should be here, at the back of the tongue, the last part of the tongue. These two parts will touch. <laughs> okay. Then we go a bit deeper. In the throat, we have two letters. We have ha for halal, halal, ha, 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 ha. 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 So halal meat is ha, 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 ha. okay, ha. I want some halal, ha. and then we have ha. halal, ha. 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 Okay. Ha. 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 ha, ha, all right, and then we go to another set of sounds which is deeper, a deeper part of the throat, ha. it comes even it kind uh, of feels that it's coming from the lungs, right? Okay, let me give you a tip. Let me give you a tip. All right. This one, imagine you have a sore throat and you eat a fresh mint, right? You eat a fresh mint and then you feel that burning effect or that fresh effect and you say, ah, ah, ah. Right, that is where the ha comes from, very deep, closer to the to the to the to the lungs than to the upper part of the throat. قل هو الله أحد قل or simply simply. You can pronounce, you can pronounce Allah, 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 Allah. All right, so my point is that it's the deeper part of the throat where it's pronounced, right? It's not up in the mouth, it's closer to the lungs. Okay. And the last sound, so number six here, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, Sixth sound of the throat is al hamza. Uh, 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 okay, it's a sudden sound. It's quite a sudden sound in Arabic. In in English, this sound doesn't exist. All right, this English doesn't exist. Uh, this sound does not exist. Exist in English. It exists in Arabic, however, and in Arabic, it's a consonant. It's not a vowel. Okay, so for example, when you say assalamu alaikum. Uh, assalamu alaikum. Uh, we tend to write it like this in English, right? Assalamu alaikum. We use a vowel, but actually in, in Arabic, this is not a vowel, brothers and sisters. It's a sudden consonant. Uh, 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 uh. It's a sudden stop. Uh, uh. Okay. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan. Ahlan. 
your health. So what I want you to know, the reason why I'm doing this exercise, exercise is to make you aware that some sounds in Arabic um, emerge from a certain part of our throat. And we have to practice that and we have to be aware of that. Okay, let's continue. So that's the first articulation point. How many articulation points do we have? Reminder. Five. Six. Five. Five, six, how many? Six. Five. 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 <laughs> okay, five. good job. Good job. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and we just started with the first one. Okay, excellent. Now let's go to the second articulation point. How are we doing with time? 8.40, mashallah. Okay, we're good, don't worry, inshallah. Now we're going to look at Surah Al-Fatiha. Do you see it on your screen? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. And we're going yes. to practice these sounds that we just saw. How many sounds? Six. Okay. Okay. So now what are we going? How are we gonna practice this? I'm going to do ayah by ayah, okay? And you repeat after me. Now, if you want to make this maybe um, uh, not like a symphony of <laughs> a chaotic symphony, you can mute your own mic and do it at your own leisure. So if you want to listen to your own voice, you can do that. But I'll just leave it up to you. Huh? Okay, let's start. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Okay, I heard something. I heard someone say Alhamdu. Ha. Be careful. I said ha like halal and haram. Alhamdu. Hamdu. Okay? Not Alhamdu. Alhamdu. It's only air. There's only air. Listen, listen to me. Alhamdu. Ha. Only air. Okay? Alhamdu. Very good. Okay, let's continue. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim MashaAllah, very good Maliki Yawmiddin Maliki Yawmiddin MashaAllah, you are all doing very wonderfully, Alhamdulillah Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een Okay, can I single out some brothers and sisters? Brother Yusuf, can you try? Can you do it, brother? MashaAllah, very good, brother. MashaAllah. Um, I don't have the names, but uh, how do I call you? <laughs> Brother Sultan, are you here? I, I see Brother Sultan, but I don't know if he's here. But let me see, uh, Nida. <laughs> Masha'Allah, beautiful, beautiful, Masha'Allah, very good. So we have that A. <laughs> Ah, okay, don't forget the ah, it's important. Even if you have to force a little bit. Iyaka na'abudu. Na'abudu, all right. Okay, all right. But still relax, huh? Tajweed has to feel natural, not forced. Okay, let me continue. 
Mashallah, beautiful, beautiful. So, Sirata, Sirata. Okay, not Sirata. Sirata. It's a ta, not a ta, right? So, we have. Look, look, look here, brothers and sisters. Look. Oh, I show you something, all right? Um, so, this is ta, and this is ta. Okay, listen to me. Okay, let's continue. We are going to go to the last area. Sirat al very good mashallah so here I'm going to actually give you this part one so that you can practice these six throat sounds. Huh? All of these are the throats. And they are found in Surah Al Fatiha. Al Fatiha. Uh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Ha. Then the second set is. Ra, ha, ra, and the last one is ha, 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 good, very good. Okay, let's continue now. Now, um, this is taken from the uh, from the Mushaf I sent you, which has colors in it. Um, this one, the PDF file. I took a photo and I just put it here. Um, what is the meaning of these colors? We will get to them slowly, slowly, but um, you can see that some colors are similar. This is called med, means lengthening, lengthening. The orange is uh, lengthening, okay. What do you use lengthening? Um, then you have, for example, med, this is the longer med. This is a different type. Uh, and this is raw, uh, raw. Uh, this is tafkhim. Make something emphatic. We say, Rob, not red, okay. So, I just tell you something about Ra, you know, uh, a little thing to know about Ra. Um, in the Quran, we're going to compare two figures, two characters. Do you know Maryam, right? Chapter yes. 19, yes, yeah, yeah. of, uh, of uh, Isa, alayhi salam. yeah, and how Mar do you Mar read her Isa. name? Maryam, Mar very good. Mar so we say, we say, Maryam, Maryam, Mar 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 it's so important oh. yeah. that we make emphasis in the wrong, Mar like Rabb. Mar 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 and then let's let's take another character now another character in the quran in english his name is mary uh no <laughs> that's mariam but let me show you. in english we write his name like this i want to you to try in arabic sorry it's very Fir'aun? Yes. Faro. Okay, how do you say in Arabic? Fir'aun. 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 Okay. So Fir his name is the opposite of Fir'aun. Fir okay. His name is, is pronounced not with emphasis because he is a, an evildoer. He has done so much evil deeds and Allah has made him low both in the world and in the hereafter. Mm. So when we pronounce his name, it's not like Maryam. 
we say Fir'aun, Fir'aun, he's low. He's not emphasized. The Ra in Fir'aun is not Fir'aun, Fir'aun. Okay, so we don't pronounce the Ra of Fir'aun with Tafkhim. We pronounce it with Tarqiq, so we make it smaller, the Ra. Okay, this is just the tip to know. Rabb, Maryam, Fir'aun. Okay, not Fir'aun, fir Fir'aun, because there is Kasra. There is an E. So the Ra of Fir'aun is made not emphatic, but small. All right. Let's continue, and I think I'm almost done showing you uh, today's slides. We have about five slides left, left inshallah, and then I will show you uh, the homework that we want to do. So I'm not going to go, I don't think I have time to go over all the articulation points today, but let's go to the nose. al -khuyshum. So we have the hole in the nose. I have two holes. Well, no, we have a hole here, and then we have two holes going out. And this hole in the back goes in the nasal cavity, right? And it connects to the mouth, right? Do you know that or not? You know or you don't know? Of course you know. <laughs> <laughs> the nose cavity is big, right? Inside. And that nose cavity later connects with the throat. Yeah? Yeah. So let me show you something. There is no, uh, no letter articulated from the nose. What do I mean by that? It means the nose is not an articulation point, it's an emission point. It releases sounds, but it doesn't articulate. The lips articulate. You say, ma, ma, na. The nose is a, is a part where that letter gets amplified, if you want. So the nose, is like, for example, do you know the trumpet? The trumpet has something of this shape, right? So the nose is like that. It doesn't articulate because these, these holes in the nose, they don't move to articulate like the lips, but they make some runna. We call it runna. Okay. The sound becomes nasal. We call it nasal. All right. So we have two nasal sounds or runna. Have you heard about Runa before? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Not me. Is a quality of sound of the nose, but the nose, these part, we cannot call them the lips of the nose because they don't move. So it, it goes out from the lungs and the nose is the vibrating area of Runa. So we have two letters that we use. Mean. You see, when I say meme, I'm, I'm moving my lips. Mean and noon. Noon. So we need the nose, but we can we don't move the nose when we pronounce that. Yes? So imagine mean. I have a cold. I have a cold, and then I want to pronounce meme, but my nose is stuck, completely stuck. I cannot mean. pronounce that. I can do it with my lips, but it doesn't go out from here. So I say, Mim. Mim. Right? It's stuck. So the air has to flow from there. It's an, it's an emission point. It's not an articulation point. All right. Runa, we will get to Runa. Don't worry. This is just an introduction today, but I will get into all of these more in the future. Runa is the quality of nasal. And we have two letters in Arabic where we use for Runa. We have meme and noon. So we have meme, meme, this one here, you see it? And then we have noon. Noon, noon, there is a chapter in the Quran called noon, right? So the noon and the meme become stronger when we have shadda on top of them. And that's the hunna becomes more strong, prevalent. عما يتساءلون عن النبأ العظيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر okay إنا إنا عما يتساءلون so the meme and the noon are the nasal parts of articulation of غنة we call it غنة all right, it's here, it's called Runa. 
don't worry, we will revisit this concept. We will revisit this concept. So don't worry, this is just a quick introduction. All right, let's continue now. Just a couple of slides left, and we are going to pronounce NAS. Oh, here, here is an illustration of the nose. Why is the nose so important for Tajweed? Sorry about this, but it's just showing you how it's working. So um, what happened here? All right. So we have, let's do it together. One, two, three. Um, 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 this sound is th. It's not C, no? Huh? Ouch. <laughs> This sound is not s. Uh, it's the sound that like three. Th, 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 thum. 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 Janet. 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 Okay, when you pronounce all of these, you have to feel a vibration in your nose. If you don't have vibration in your nose, it means there's something wrong. It does, you're not doing it right. You need to feel a little vibration, vibration of the nose. Okay. This is the cavity that is the trumpet. It makes the sound more nasal. So it gives it quality of nasal. We call it runa, 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 runa. I think I need to find another way to show you to write runa. And that's articulation point number two out of five, right? Right or not? Are yes. You me? Right. Yes. 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 Alhamdulillah. Let's continue, and we are almost done. We are going to practice a surah of the Quran called Surah Nas. 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 Okay. Let's do it together. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you spend two, two units here. How do we know a unit? N S N S one two one two. Okay. Kul a'udhu bi Rabbin Nas. Kul a'udhu bi Rabbin Nas. Okay. Malikin Nas. Yes. Okay, let me show you something. Why is this a science? Why is Tajweed a science? Because if you spend two units here, you have to spend two units here. Don't spend three. For example, don't do this. It's wrong. It has to be, how to say, it has to be equal. Amount of length. Right. Let's continue. Ilahinas. Ilahinas. Okay. Min Sharil was Wasil Hanas. Mashallah. Aladi was Swiss to peace to do in us. Aladi was Swiss to peace to us. Mina Ginati was 
Okay, I'm going to make a, perf a mistake on purpose here, and you tell me what's the mistake, okay? Yes or not? Okay. Okay, yes. okay. listen. Okay. Listen to my recitation. It's not just. What? It's not just. What type of mistake is this? Zabarin, a serious mistake or the not so serious mistake? A fatal mistake. A serious because Very serious mistake. Right, uh, because instead of saying jin, jin, the jin kind, not the human kind, the jin kind, you're saying from paradise. Jin. <laughs> okay, so we change the meaning. We have to be careful. That's called lahan jali. 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 Mashallah, good job. Good job, sister. Very good. Okay. That means serious, serious mispronunciation. Okay, we are good. We continue. We are getting to the last slide and to the much feared homework. <laughs> so, for next time, I want you to practice uh, recitation of a surah we haven't uh, reviewed yet. But you can also send your recitation of Al Fatiha and Al Nas. Okay. But you can also do a third one if you are able to, because we haven't practiced Qalqala yet. We are, I want you to practice Suratul Ikhlas. What is Suratul Ikhlas? Good job. Ikhlas means sincerity in Arabic. Ikhlas, sincere. Sincere. This has Qalqala. What you can do, brothers and sisters, you can send to the WhatsApp group we have your recitation. You can record yourself. If you are not confident, you can record yourself, make mistakes, and then record the one you are more confident about and send it. But since we are a big group, I don't guarantee I will reply to all of you. <laughs> so I will try to give you feedback as much as I can. But we have 50, mashallah, in this group. So I don't think I'll be able to give uh, individual feedback, but I will try. Okay. So if you don't like to send it to the group, all the group, you know, uh, try and find something else. You know, practice with uh, your family or brother or sister, and wife, husband. If you are not confident to send this recording to the group, it doesn't have to. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to. Okay. You don't have to feel forced to send it. Okay. It's just for you to practice. So. Let's practice these three surah for next time. Surah Al-Fatiha, to practice the throat sounds. Okay, the six throat sounds. Then we will practice Surah Al-Nas, to practice Ghunna, mm, mm. And the new one, which is, we haven't seen yet, but it's okay. Surah Al-Ikhlas for Qalqala. Qul Allahu Ahad, okay? Any questions 